Hello and welcome to The Conversation. I'm Ishan Russell. Well, today we are talking about the BJP as the Bharatiya Janata Party seems to be riding high on the wave of its prime ministerial candidate, so it says so. But it's not all well in the house of Saffron. The party with a difference is now one with differences. Why is that so? Take a look. It all started with a tweet. Senior BJP leader Mukhtar Abbas Nakvi taking exception to the induction of rebel JDU leader Sabir Ali into the party fold. While everyone thought that Nakvi's handle had been hacked, only a few realized that it was heartburn pouring out on social media. Sabir Ali is a known critic of Bihar Chief Minister Nitish Kumar and BJP was hoping to use him to counter the JDU in Bihar. He was also outspoken on the issue of IM founder Yasin Bhatkal by defending the terrorist after his arrest last year. This blowhard blowcold comes just days after right-wing outfit Sriram Sene's Pramod Muthalik was first inducted into the BJP and then hastily shown the door within hours due to internal pressure. So is the BJP losing its way just days before the crucial general election or is it still unsure whether the so-called Modi wave will take them past the magic figure of 272 in parliament? So what has been happening within the BJP and why is this series of exits and uh, entries, uh, entries happening? Venkatesh Ramakrishnan, a senior journalist and political commentator, joins us in the studio. Thank you very much for coming in, Venkatesh. What do you make of it? Sabir Ali, ex entry, exit, uh, Pramod Muthalik, what's with the BJP? Everybody wants to come in, but the BJP's uh, internal problems seem to be highlighted because of this. Not just internal problems. BJP seems to be going through a kind of identity crisis, which is many dimensions. Mm -hmm. See, on the one side, the party and the larger Sangh Parivar believe that the candidature of Narendra Modi as Prime Minister is a clear winner, and they will be very close to getting a majority on their own. But internally, I mean, in terms of its organization, that's not the situation. We have got these problems uh, which have come along with the prime ministerial candidature of Narendra Modi because uh, for the first time uh, in the new millennia, the BJP is uh, coming up with a completely personality-oriented campaign. Mm -hmm. See, if you look at Indian history, mm -hmm. Indian political history, there have been only two other elections where a personality-oriented campaign was thrust upon the people. First was in 1980 when Indira Gandhi, after the Janta experiment, Indira Gandhi was made the kind of symbol for hope for India and the Congress coined the slogan, uh, Indira Bulao, Desh Bachao. Yeah. Then uh, in 1998, you had uh, Abki Bari, Atal Bihari. Mm -hmm. Now, BJP is also now uh, on the same path. They said, Abki Bar, Modi Sarkar. Mm -hmm. But even when this campaign is going and they feel that there is some resonance to it, but at the same time, internally there are problems and old, some of the old guards are being kind of, you know, uh, divested of their position. They are being kind of sidelined, including L.K. Adwani and Murli Mana Joshi. And yes, that brings me to my next question. It perhaps seems, and that is what K.C. Tyagi, leader of the JDU, had to say, that the era of Atal and Adwani is over. And uh, with Modi now in charge, uh, the times of Sabir Ali's and the likes have come in. Absolutely. I think, you know, uh, the, 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 the kind of leadership that uh, uh, BJP seems to be developing at the grassroots, uh, it is not in consonance with the BJP's original ideology. Of course, perhaps this is the new face of the BJP, but it is not going down well with the old guard and I have a feeling that it may not go down very, very well with the uh, original uh, workers of the Bharati Janata Party at the grassroots and yes, maybe even of the people. That could mean that perhaps that mission 272 that uh, the BJP is on might be a distant dream because the party workers seem a little less enthused. I mean, there have been so many candidates who have been para-dropped. There have been major exits, senior stalwarts like Jaswan Singh, uh, he was well uh, shunted out of the party yesterday, expelled for six years. Yeah, absolutely. The thing is, uh, uh, there seems to be that the kind of excitement that one saw uh, with Modi's candidature and the BJP's prospects, uh, say, some two, three months ago, I think it is on the way in. It is, it's coming down. And uh, one is getting, as a, as, as a political journalist who, who you know, who's, who's constantly following these things, uh, I am hearing, uh, uh, you know, the, the kind of, the, 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 the reduction of enthusiasm uh, I'm getting reports from uh, across North India, from places like Bihar, Haryana, and even parts of Uttar Pradesh, which could be, you know, uh, very significant in the in, in terms of the larger result.
Absolutely. I mean, every seat counts in 2014 uh, in this Lok Sabha poll. But uh, what do you think of uh, the BJP and it's a new entrance and uh, perhaps a new entrance not get allowed being allowed entry? Well, you can join in the conversation. IndiaPostLive.com is the website. You can go there, post your video comments, hashtag IndiaPostLive on Twitter, hashtag the conversation on Twitter. Join in the conversation. We'd of course love to hear your opinions, your comments. Uh, now, uh, we have in fact uh, one... Uh, viewer who's uh, just uh, come in on Skype with us, so Vinayak uh, Dutt from Delhi joins us. Vinayak, uh, your comments on uh, the BJP and uh, its uh, latest doings? Yeah, I just want to say like uh, if we go by the uh, by the philosophy of the Maryada Purushottam, then the uh, Ravans we have from Mohd Muthalik is no less than a Ravan because he, because uh, his acts show that he don't respect women and the party who, uh, who go for votes, asking votes at the name of Lord Ram, they are inducting people like him. I don't know, but uh, what can be a strategy behind him, behind inducting such people? It is plain and simple, Vinayak. It's, it, the, 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 the name of the game is votes. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing else. No, but is Mutalik that big a leader and commanding that kind you of a see, If you look at the BJP's largest strategy for this election, uh, Vinayak, I'm, 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 uh, I want to address you also on this. Uh, the thing is, you know, there's been, it's, it's, it's kind of a combination of two factors. Hmm. On the one side, they try to project this Modi image as, you know, and Modi and Gujarat model as a great development, you know, initiative or a great development model which can be applicable for the whole of India. And on the other side, if you look at uh, what has been happening uh, across the country, I think uh, the BJP and the Sangh Parivar have been engaged uh, in developing and creating uh, high intensity and low intensity communal conflicts across many states. I mean, the, 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 the experience of Musafar Nagar was one. Mm -hmm. So, I think, you know, there is also an element of, uh, you know, pursuing the Hindutva agenda and the communal polarization that goes along with it uh, at one level. I think uh, uh, this is what you see in the induction of people like Pramod Muttalik. Of course, they could not take it to the logical conclusion because of the response from various quarters in the party and party supporters. But then I think you know, th there is a, a dual strategy at play. All right, Vinayaka, uh, does that satisfy your query? Yeah, but uh, I have uh, one more point to add. Like, uh, Mo if Modi wave is there, then why people with a political background, especially the non-politicians, are on their toes to poach the people from the other parties? See, they, most of the, uh, I would say, brokers, of such kind, they are not the actual politicians. They are people who are not politic, not politicians, but have enough knowledge about the politics, and they are engaging with different political parties to get their people inducted into B, into BJP. And we have seen, and we have a lot of examples here. Well, that is why the, the question of identity crisis that I was talking about. Uh, BJP's at one level seems to be very confident that the Modi magic is working. And at another level, it feels that, you know, that perhaps it's not working. So, the, the, that is essentially comes from the, uh, the inherent problems within the organization. All right, uh, that, that's an interesting point. And I want to go back a little in history uh, as far as the BJP's problems like these are concerned. Uh, many say that when uh, the Vajpayee government was also being formed, the BJP did not have enough quality politicians or quality administrators and therefore a lot of lateral entries were brought in and the Sangh had a, a major view about that and wasn't too happy with that. So, can we see something like that happening this time around or no, is Modi it's completely in charge? It is qualitatively different. Mm. Uh, from the situation that existed in 1996, 1998 and 1999 uh, when Vajpayee held you know, power for brief periods of time mm. starting with 13 days to 13 months and then uh, six years. Six years. Uh, what I would say is uh, uh, there is an effort to uh, build this party around a personality now, I mean around Modi and I would say that you know it's been partly successful too but then as it as it, as it gathers momentum, as the whole exercise gathers momentum, I think uh, uh, the, the old guard is revolting and uh, this whole question of total control may not work out. All right, the old guard is a question I'd like to come back to, but Vinayak, we'll uh, leave you with one final comment if you want to make any, any additional points you want to make before we let you go. I just want to make uh, the last point, like uh, I have seen that the BJP president, like 
Rajnath Singh, he is asserting himself on uh, most of the cadres. But uh, his such qualities are way different from his predecessors like Kushabhau Thakre. He was there under uh, Mr. Vajpayee and in late 1990s, but he was a great, uh, we can say that he was quite subtle if we compare him to uh, 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 Rajnath Singh. So we have a leader who is assertive as Modi in comparison to Vajpayee. We have a leader, Rajnath Singh, who is more assertive than Kushabhau Thakre. Are we going towards a, a dictatorial rule if, if BJP comes to power? Because if there will not be a one power center, definitely uh, if both of them have enjoy, uh, enjoy a good chemistry, they, both of them will be a single power center. I think the question, uh, the answer to your question is essentially it can come only when you look at the numbers. If the numbers are really good, you may actually see a dictatorial rule. If the numbers are not good, you may see an anarchic rule. So, let us see. All right, uh, Vinayak, thanks very much for joining us on the conversation. Hope you join in very, very soon. Do comment. Uh, you can also come in and comment. Hashtag India Post Live on Twitter, IndiaPostLive.com. You can post your video comments. If you want to participate in the conversation, just turn on your Skype and join in and over here. Well, we'll, get, we'll come back to the point of the old guard. Just one thing, an old war house of the BJP. Uh, there, there was a time when he almost stopped Atal Bihari Vajpayee from resigning after the 2002 riots and when he wanted to resign. That kind of a stop stalwart leader being shunted out of the party. Uh, he has been having a troubled spell in the BJP. This is not the first time that he's been kicked out. Yeah, yeah. The thing is, you know, it's not just Jaswan Singh. Uh, there is a new work culture in the BJP. See, the way Murli Bhana Joshi was shunted out of Varanasi, hmm. the way LK Adwani was not allowed to shift from Gandhinagar. Hmm. Uh, these are all straws in the wind for, a, for an organization. Uh, and I think... Uh, 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 my personal feeling is that the new order uh, has come to take um, come to stay in, in the BJP. Of course, it is f facing some teething problems at this point of time. But then I think ultimately it would uh, it would assert itself and uh, change the character of this party. It certainly is changing the character of this party because you t take a leader like Sushma Swaraj and she's. At loggerheads, she didn't want Sri Ramalu back into the party. She objected over that. She objected over uh, Vinod Sharma of the Congress joining the Haryana Janit Congress, their partners in Haryana. So, uh, as far as that personality cult of Modi goes, uh, within the BJP, perhaps they're just hoping for a mistake from Modi and his men and they'd all pounce back on him. No, I think it's not just a question of making a mistake. Mm. Uh, there is There are larger forces at play. It's not like, uh, uh, you know... Uh, Politics does not function like that. Mm. Uh, politics functions in, at, the, at, the, at the behest, at the control of uh, larger forces at play. And I have a feeling the, both the mainstream parties of this country, both the Congress and the BJP, uh, are controlled to a large extent by corporate interests. So, there are a lot of corporate interests are also at play. So, you know, it's all, it's not... But Arvind Kejriwal has been alleging of the Adanis and the Ambanis. It's is not just the Adanis and Ambanis. There are, the, 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 this factor is at play at various levels. Mm -hmm. I mean, so uh, we need to see that from that perspective as well. Interesting point you make over there as far as uh, the difference between the two main political parties and their backers. Well, the backers seem to be the same on both sides. Uh, but uh, we'll talk a little bit more about uh, the BJP and its internal problems. Uh, do you see this kind of a, uh, pro these kinds of entries and exits happening in the BJP damaging uh, the party's image in terms of uh, the Lok Sabha elections too close to the election? That's something we referred to earlier because uh, the kind of enthusiasm and excitement that you saw in the BJP some two three months ago, uh, that is certainly coming down. Mm -hmm. And uh, it this, these these developments and the kind of credibility issues that they have thrown up mm -hmm. have certainly contributed to it. I, I saw a very interesting cartoon the other day. It said uh, that uh, vote for the BJP and in return you get your old Congress MP. So a lot of congressmen <laughs> have <laughs> jumped the bandwagon. But uh, that, that is a problem. And spare a thought for the Indian National Congress. Yeah, I saw another cartoon myself, yeah. which said which uh, uh, shows the BJP office and somebody is writing out a membership. Hmm. So this BJP office karyakarta is asking uh, the person who comes in. Would you want a membership, long-term membership for a, a two-year membership or a few for a, for a few <laughs> hours? <laughs> 
Right, uh, but, uh, but th this is the other thing that I want to talk about. Uh, a lot of minority leaders are joining in the BJP and the BJP is old. I mean, the story that we played out with the tip between Mukhtar Abbas Nakhvi and Sabir Ali or over the entrance of Sab Sabir Ali, that is something that uh, Modi perhaps wants to tide over, get in as many minority faces in so that that vote that is critical in a lot of seats could perhaps be dented a little? I I think it's it's not exactly uh, a question of garnering new votes. It's essentially creating a new image because uh, I do not think you know the Sabir Ali's and the Mukhtar Abbas Naqvi's of the world are going to make any change to the Muslim Muslim vote and and, and BJP's relation to it. There's no way. Uh, but then uh, these are there are there are these uh, people who gravitate towards uh, power when uh, you know when they see a change in the air. And uh, I would uh, say Sabir Ali is somebody like that. And many other Muslim, uh, you know, uh, figures who have joined the BJP uh, or have gravitated towards uh, the BJP's idea. Uh, I think, you know, they're all essentially people who have seen that the, 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 the kind of change in the air and perhaps the possibility of BJP getting into power. Uh, having said that, as I was, I would like just like to repeat that, you know, that all this, this this movement of some individuals and leaders to the BJP is not going to make any substantive difference to the Muslim vote in this country. All right, but uh, what about the Sangh? Is the Sangh completely taking a back seat and letting Modi and his team do their job? Or do you think that somewhere, if these kinds of instances keep happening, there could be something coming in from Nagpur? Sangh has been lose, fighting a losing battle since 2004. Mm. 2004, it kind of imposed a document on the BJP. Mm. It was titled uh, uh, Task Ahead, mm -hmm. uh, Medium Term and Long Term. Mm -hmm. And they have been trying to, you know, start a corrective process in the BJP. Uh, and originally the task was interested Rajnath Singh. Mm -hmm. And after five years, they realized that Rajnath Singh was not capable of doing it. Mm -hmm. Then they, after much search, they, you know, kind of uh, focused on somebody like Gadkari, who was mm -hmm. not, who was virtually unknown uh, mm -hmm. beyond Maharashtra. Mm -hmm. uh, they brought him and in fact, Gadkari was the original Prime Minister candidate for the BJP for the 2014 elections. But then, you know what happened in the BJP? Gadkari himself was, you know, targeted as part of a campaign which kind of presented him, which, which kind of exposed him as a, as a uh, uh, leader with questionable, you know, uh, rules and questionable actions uh, in terms of its, his own industries and business. And he had to, uh, the, the RSS wanted to amend the BJP constitution, give him a yes. second term as president. But all that was, you know, carefully torpedoed. And people who know the BJP know who did it. <laughs> I mean, from, from which office all these documents came out. And, right. you know, uh, it, it's been, in fact, uh, uh, RSS leader uh, Vaidya himself had said that, you know, that all these operations to oust Gadkari from party presidentship uh, emanates from the uh, chief minister's office in Gandhinagar. Okay. He, he's on record. I mean, he, he wrote it on his Marathi blog. So, we know what's happening in, at that level. So, uh, I have a feeling that, you know, the Sangha, of course, is trying to battle the situation. But for the time being, it has succumbed to the, the Modi phenomenon. All right. Uh, well, uh, we'll go to another view. Gautam joins us uh, from uh, Noida in the national capital region. Uh, Gautam, uh, your comments on uh, what the BJP has been doing and what do you make of it? Uh, can I, can I ask a question to the... Sure, expert? sure, sure. Go ahead. Uh, I, I want to try out a, a bit of a conspiracy theory uh, that I read uh, in today's newspaper, uh, which is uh, regarding Barmer itself, uh, which is uh, the news was regarding uh, oil uh, being... Uh, Kane, I think, uh, discovered uh, oil resources in Barmer and the newspaper report linked this to the uh, tussle that is going on in uh, within the BJP. Right. Do you think there's anything to that? Well, is there anything to that? Barmer no, oil and was, Jaswan Singh's candidature from there? That what, what was I saying? I said that there are corporate interests at play at various levels. I mean, I think the question is, uh, you know, the answer is contained in the question itself. So, uh, but how, how it will play out how ultimately how what are the political manifestations of this you know it's too early to say but certainly this is an angle i mean this is not in one constituency it's, it's you know you will see reflections of this in many other constituencies and many other states across the country 
All right, Gautam, hope that answers your question. Any other comments you'd like to make? Uh, just a uh, slightly larger question, uh, which is uh, the, uh, Mr. Venkatesh spoke about the identity crisis of the BJP. Uh, I was wondering if, if this is, uh, if, uh, if this is any anything uh, new to the BJP, uh, as in, uh, do they have, uh, they have, I suppose, uh, suppose uh, a region, uh, an ideological region, but uh, have they ever had uh, a settled uh, identity because they, they seem to be, uh, seem to me to be um, as opportunistic as uh, any other party. So is this anything specific to the BJP? All right, that's an interesting point he makes about opportunism and is that message going down that the BJP is becoming too opportunistic uh, at uh, this stage uh, with trying to get as many people on board? No, BJP has been trying to do that. Uh, in fact, uh, BJP, uh, for the last two years, the BJP strategy has been to get the maximum number of seats on its own. Mm -hmm. And in fact, Narendra Modi is on record uh, saying that uh, if we get the, the, uh, the number of seats that we want to get, if we are able to improve on our past record and get uh, the highest number of seats, get close to 200 or something, uh, the allies will come on their own. The allies will come and join us on their own. Uh, that is something which the uh, BJP has been believe, believing. But then, uh, as I was saying, this whole calculation on numbers, I think uh, BJP itself has got a sense that it is going slightly awry. Okay, that's an interesting point you make over there and with two months to go to the polls, anything could happen. Well, thanks very much, Gautam. Hope those uh, 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 answers uh, satisfied your uh, queries. Uh, thanks very much for joining and we hope you join in the conversation very, very soon again. Uh, but uh, interesting point he made about Rajnath Singh earlier and Rajnath Singh uh, and Vinayak had also made that point about Rajnath Singh controlling the BGP. Who's calling the shots? I mean, one would really want to know, is it Modi or is Rajnath Singh also a presence and is the other... No, I think like the parliamentary board, such uh, no, no, decision-making bodies. After the Goa conclave, hmm. I think you have a triumvirate controlling the BJP. Okay. Of course, Modi is the pivot. Hmm. Modi, Rajnath Singh and Jaitley. Hmm. These are the people. All others have been sidelined. All this, all these committees, all the central election committee, parliamentary board, these are all there. But then, you know, they don't really have any, any say in uh, as far as decision-making is concerned. And... Uh, I think Rajnath Singh was kind of, you know, was reluctant because he's also very close to the Sangh leadership as such. Mm -hmm. But then I think, you know, uh, uh, he has been kind of uh, bought over with political appeasement. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's get into a few of our viewer comments. Uh, they've been uh, sending us a lot of comments on Twitter as far as the BJP is concerned. Uh, uh, Ram Singh writes in from Rampur saying that uh, Narendra Modi ko koi nahi rok paega. Nobody would be able to stop Narendra Modi irrespective of who comes in and who goes. It's, this election is all about Narendra Modi. Also, Shriya from Delhi writes in, it is surprising that the BJP, despite its uh, leadership and uh, so many leaders in its presence, is uh, resorting to getting uh, uh, such a uh, resorting to such tactics of getting anybody and everybody on board. Well, interesting comments coming in over there. So a lot of people, uh, especially on social media, are very uh, strongly uh, favor Narendra Modi, and some interesting comments over there against. But uh, as far as uh, the Sangh is concerned, we've spoken about that. We've spoken about Rajnath Singh. But from here on, you mentioned the next two months would be critical. Where can the BJP go wrong and what measures it should take as caution? Is, it any, is there anything that it can do to, t to turn things around? No, I have a feeling that uh, strategically BJP has uh, got its timing wrong. Mm -hmm. I think the Modi candidature has also peaked. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, if you notice his speeches, you know, there's, there's not anything new that he's saying. So he's, he's tending to repeat himself. Uh, it'll have to do something dramatic. Uh, to kind of, you know, uh, the, the, to stop the current slide that is happening at this point of time. Uh, but let's see, it's, it's all a question of uh, what is the, the scale of the slide, or what is the scale of stability. I mean, that, that, that is ultimately, the, that's the question that's going to answer 
what BJP can do and how BJP can progress. Well, the problem with the BJP and perhaps many observers also suggest that with, with the Congress, nobody goes against the Gandhi family. I mean, ever since the, since the last rebellion of Sharad Pawar and Sangma and Tariq Anwar and the likes, uh, with the BJP, that's not the case. You had the present BJP president Rajnath Singh in his last presidency and the last days of his presidency were pretty harrowing for him. So as far as control over the party is concerned and as far as the BJP often imploding, is there a real fear that the BJP could implode this time around as well? It's not, it's, it's too early to make any prediction on that. Mm. Again, the answer to that would depend on the numbers. The numbers are less, the BJP could implode. The numbers are more, BJP may be forced to stay together. All right, so it's all about the numbers. Uh, we have another viewer coming in. Shubo joins us from Noida. Shubo, thanks very much for joining in the conversation. Uh, your question. Yeah, uh, my first comment would be that uh, people going in and then being chucked out of the BJP. Is this a sequel to the Ayaram Gayaram era? Is it? <laughs> well, in terms of. If you look at it in terms of political history, you cannot really compare it to that. Mm. But then it's, a, it's, a, it's a new kind of IRM Gayaram phenomenon. It's yeah. not exactly the repetition of the old IRM Gayaram phenomenon, but it's a, it's a new kind of IRM Gayaram phenomenon. So it's a new phenomenon. Shubho, any other question that you or comment that you have? Uh, uh, yeah, instead of, of making a fool of itself, why does not, why, why, why is BJP, you know, just selecting random people? Why don't they sit and do a meeting and you know, serious discussions to first, you know, know about the candidates they are including instead of making a fool of themselves. All right, interesting point you make over there. Shubha, we look forward to having you in the conversation and we'll just ask Venkat to answer that for you. Venkat, why is there no collective decision making? Who's calling the shots? Suddenly, somebody objects to somebody's presence and he's suddenly out of the party. No, in fact, as I was saying, that there is, there is, it's essentially the dichotomy that's working in the BJP that you're seeing. Mm -hmm. And the dichotomy is leading to confusion. Uh, otherwise, you know, it was all set. I mean, BJP was thinking that it's all set, but it's not all set. That's the problem. All right, it certainly is not all set. And uh, Mission 272 is a few days away from completion. Let's see whether that goes. Uh, one final question as far as Narendra Modi goes. Uh, is this Narendra Modi's strategy of getting in as many people in as possible? Or is it... Uh, just anybody who wants to come into the BJP can enter the BJP. Like perhaps the ARP phenomenon where you have so many people just joining in with a cause. Is that cause perhaps the thing that could uh, get in even more people and create more problems with other people feeling sidelined, the old a lot? No, I don't think so. I think what is essentially happening is uh, there has been this understanding after the Goa conclave between Modi and Rajnath Singh that you know the selection of candidates will be between the two of them. That is a decision which they had taken which privately, I mean, which of course, and whatever be the Central Election Committee, whatever the recommendations that, their team will finalize the candidates across the country. Mm -hmm. And I think that uh, streak, that authoritarian streak that they have developed in, the mechanism that they've developed, mm -hmm. I think that is causing pr this confusion, these problems. All right, and now will that con uh, confusion cost them dear? Well, we'll have a couple of months to go before we can finally take a call on that one. On that note, Venkatesh, thank you very much for coming in. And uh, we'll remind our viewers once again that it's the conversation that you can join in on through your home, on Skype, on Twitter, hashtag uh, India Post Live on Twitter and uh, the con hashtag the conversation on Twitter, also indiapostlive.com. We look forward to having your video comments and uh, your views. So come join in the conversation. Thanks very much for joining us for today.